Hey everyone, Nick here, and today I'm going to show you how to make this horizontal bar chart with a beautiful vertical trend line on it. Now, it has been really easy for us to create uh, vertical column charts with horizontal lines on them for a long time. It's basically a default chart type in Excel or PowerPoint. Just click on the little combo chart button and you'll probably see that pop up. But it's been more challenging to get this vertical trend line across, uh, across horizontal bars in a bar chart. And I saw a video by Minda Treacy over at my online training hub. I'm going to put her link and her information to my online training hub in the description below. I hope you'll go and check that out. And she showed a pretty cool technique that I had never seen before um, on how to make this vertical line happen in a horizontal uh, bar chart before. So it's pretty cool. I reached out to Minda. I asked her if it would be okay if I showed how I used her steps to make my own chart. And she said, of course, go ahead. Thank you, Minda, so much uh, for your support and for allowing me to link to your videos in the notes. I hope you all go and check it out. So, okay. Okay, I'm going to go over to my PowerPoint side and let's go ahead and start making this chart. So if you have a chart a placeholder in your slide, just go ahead and click it. And then we're going to go ahead and click the bar chart and then get this option here. Click OK. The chart will, the default chart will pop up. The source Excel file will too. I know that I'm going to need, oops, actually I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to reopen that source file there. I know that I need two series of data. I don't need the third, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that right away. I'm going to go ahead and I'm go over to my export from my data export here, and I'm going, it's already copied, so I'm going to copy that data, and then I'm going to paste it right here. Control V to paste. This little error pops up, but if you push OK, it's going to expand the size of the dyna dynamic table, and then that will expand the chart as well. Now what I need to do is calculate this average. So I want an annual average here. So I'm going to go ahead and type satisfaction score. And then this is the annual average. And to do that, I'm going to do a formula. So equals average, open parenthesis, and then I'm going to calculate the average of this entire data range, close the parenthesis, and push enter there. It's about it's going to be about 77, 78%. And then in Microsoft 365, once I do that in a dynamic table, you get this little square here. And I'm going to click it, and it says overwrite all cells in this column with this formula. If you click it, it'll just copy that formula, uh, and it will refer to the exact same cell range. So that's kind of a cool trick um, uh, to uh, do that instead of copying all the way down. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of my Excel file. Now you can see we have two series of data in the chart. We have our data, our satisfaction scores in the blue bar. We have our teal bar, which is our annual average score. I'm going to go ahead first and delete this chart title. We don't need it. And what I'm going to do now in order, uh, there's a couple little things that I want to, uh, a couple aesthetic things that I want to change uh, right away. So for instance, December, uh, the chart goes from December to January. I really want it to go in reverse from January to December. So we're going to go ahead and reverse the order. So just click on that data ser series or, or the uh, axis there. We're going to format axis, right click, and then over at the format access menu down here, there's a checkbox that says categories in reverse order. Go ahead and click that and you'll see that the categories switch. Now I have my X axis on top. I want that to still be on bottom. So all you need to do there is under uh, horizontal axis crosses over here on the menu, instead of automatic, click on at maximum category and that will switch everything there. So now we're in a perfect alignment, perfect order. I'll go ahead and close out of that menu. And now what we need to do is look for, let's try to insert the trend line. So just like Minda did in her video, I'm going to go ahead and click uh, my series, my annual average series here. We're going to right click, and then you'll see this option that says add trend line. Go ahead and click that, and when you do, you'll see this faint dotted line appears. Now, just like any other line, we have a format trend line menu over here. Just like any other line, you can go ahead and update it, uh, format it to how you like. So I want it to be solid, so I'm going to make it a solid line instead of a dash line. And then let's update the width. I'm going to say to three points. I know that I want this to be dark blue, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the dark blue. And then what we need to do, now obviously we have the line, but we don't need the bars that are associated with it. So let's make them invisible and just click on the entire series, go over to the format data series menu, and then under fill, we're going to collect, select no fill. Perfect. Now you can start seeing this, uh, the chart taking shape. Now right here, I'm going to go and click on these data bars. Let's make them gray so that the blue line really pops up. Perfect. And then they're really skinny bars. Let's make them a little thicker by going up to the bar chart icon and then playing with the gap width. I'm going to go ahead and set this down to 
Now I still see there's some misalignment here with um, the bars and the labels over here, but that's because we're still in a clustered bar chart, a side-by-side -side bar chart. If you click in the trend line bars, you can see those bars are still there. They're just invisible because we selected no fill. So let's overlap the bars completely. Again, over on this uh, format data series menu, under series overlap, slide that all the way to 100%, and now the bars are on top of each other and you only see the data bars. There's another thing that I don't like, and that is that this trend line only goes from the middle of the top bar to the middle of the bottom bar. It doesn't go all the way from the top to the bottom, but you can really easily change the top and the bottom length by form, going back to the format trend line menu. And then all the way down here under forecast, you see this forward and backward boxes. Let's just type in 0.5 and in the forward box and in the backward box, we'll type in 0.5. It looks like we have to do that one more time. Maybe I just have to push enter. It's not liking me right here. 0.5, okay, there we go, and 0.5. So enter and now you can see that updates the height uh, of that bar. So now it stretches from the top to the bottom. Perfect. Now I have this legend here. I probably don't need it, but I'll put this on top just so we can see it a little bit more easily. The satisfaction score is still there. That's fine. We don't need this annual average. We can select it and delete it. And then I have this linear annual average. That's for my trend line. What if I wanted to keep the legend active, but I wanted to change the name here in the legend? You can do that when you open the format trend line menu again. So right click format trend line, go down to trend line name. Right now it's set to automatic. Let's set it to custom and say annual average. Perfect. That looks really good. Now, if I wanted to do a few more aesthetic customizations to the chart, I could probably increase the size of those labels there. Let's increase the size of the axis labels to 100% there. Looks pretty good. And then what I wanted to do before is I used some color to draw my reader's attention to the fact that the summer months were higher in satisfaction than the others. So let's go ahead and isolate one bar and I'm gonna make that gold, and then I'm gonna do that for every single bar above average. You have to make sure that you're isolating these individually to color them, because if you do the whole series, then everything will turn yellow. So these are my individuals there. And November is a tiny little bit above average, uh, but we will just keep that there for now. Now, if you wanted to change the um, color of this, let's say, let's actually just delete the satisfaction score here, and then let's go ahead and make this blue. I'm going to make that bold, and then we can move that over. Now that looks like a really nice chart, a beautiful horizontal bar chart with a vertical trend line in the chart just by using that little trend, add trend line feature that comes um, standard in Excel and PowerPoint and all the charts that you can make in Microsoft. So thanks again to Minda Tracy from my online training hub. Go and check her out again. Uh, really cool video, really cool trick. I'm going to use it a lot in my uh, PowerPoint charting. I think even for vertical bars with horizontal lines, I think we can, we can kind of use this trick for those as as well. If you like this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. Uh, hit the subscribe button below. If you'd like notifications every time I post a new video on data design, PowerPoint, or Excel, you can go ahead and hit uh, sele select that bell icon and go and click on uh, customize the notifications that you get. So thanks again for watching. I had a really great time doing it. Hope you have a great day and I will see you next time.